pathologies. Coming out of NIH, actually, uh, I had a lot of tools in my hand and I could really hit all the balls which, we, which I was facing, be it acute or chronics. But when it comes to multiple pathologies, like multiple diagnoses coming in hand, I had a difficulty with drawing them out of uh, anti-diabetics, anti-hepatitis. This we see commonly in all the homeopaths home. They have the Cygesium bottle with them or the uranium nitricum 3X or uh, thyroidinum 3X, which, which reminds us in uh, maintaining medicine for you know? So I was really, this was really disturbing me. Uh, I thought, what is the solution this, to this? I was really looking back and then I looked back, I started reading the source books. One side of diseases are those diseases, like sometimes you come across patient who do on a, on a routine checkup, they come with hypertension and all those things. Now, hypothyroidism just on the routine check or with a blood sugar of 300, 400 without any significant disturbance uh, in there um, with them, like without any trouble per se, you can say. Or you can see some vitiligo lipidoma cases, which is in uh, full swing all over. You can see people with uh, white patches roaming about without any concern about it or without really any trouble about it. They will be concerned, obviously, without any trouble per se. So my concern was uh, treating those cases, with, uh, uh, those uh, multiple diagno diagnosed cases. Like uh, Generally, what we do is, like when we come across uh, multiple pathologies, what we do is we try to form a drug picture. The drug picture will encompass all the data of the patient and the diseases he is suffering from. And then we will be either coming out with the, if, if you are lucky enough, we will come with a single drug picture or we will, we will be having multiple drugs pictures in front of us. Either we will have to follow through one after another. This is based basically on the understanding of the physician and the interpretation of the knowledge we has acquired so long and this the scope of this is very limited you know it is like it's it's limited to the patient's knowledge uh, it's, uh, sorry it's, uh, it's limited to the uh, physician's knowledge and understanding and interpretation so i found this um, of course this was using this one uh, this is what i was using for uh, so many years close to a century 10 years odd and uh, the scope was a uh, little um, limited um, this I saw by my patients you know, following me for years together and then they say, ma'am, I'm there with you for so many years. I'm your regular clientele. They were proud to associate with me, but I was not happy. Uh, probably I'm not relieving them. I'm not curing them of the chronic disease which they were suffering from. Um, so among the so many methodologies I tried, one was working out on characteristics. Okay, if I could get a clear characteristics, two or three characteristics, that would evolve into a good remedy that was more curative but then the difficulty with uh, handling with characteristics is that we need an order to be followed and that order has to be in the right direction and if it don't go in the right direction sometimes may, we may revert from the process from the path of the cure or we may even end up with a palliation or a suppression and uh, next was prescription based on comments uh, we, we get to diabetes and we prescribe immediately uh, the cephalandrin based on, uh, of course, we, if we get a characterized uh, common symptom like you know, burning souls in uh, diabetes, we uh, prescribe cephalandrin and uh, gymnam and all those things, uh, which were, which was like, you know, which usually palliates. That's what I, that's what I, is my experience. And uh, it remains like uh, maintaining those with the patient throughout the life. Like as they say, lifestyle disorder runs throughout the life and they also remain with the life. Uh, with the patient. Uh, but Hahnemann says that the chronic diseases, true chronic diseases are curable. Artificial chronic diseases uh, or the true chronic diseases can never be overcome by the lifestyle modification or by uh, the robust constitution. You need, really need some deep acting antisorics, a series of antisorics to treat a chronic disease. And when it is multiple pathologies, obviously we are overburdened with too many chronic diseases. So the focus has to be deepened rather than widened. That's what I felt. Uh, so the next was, uh, this is uh, especially my, um, my, my area, which I would like to share today. This is not my speciality, but this is where I have found a, um, a very good result. Like uh, this is this, this working out on um, the chapters on sensation complaints in general, aggravation and amelioration, appetite, uh, sweat, sleep position, uh, sleep, sleep with all those intricate details, sleep position, uh, prescription um, based on the methodology which uh, Dr. Veerabhadra was formulated. Uh, 
uh, here the number of antiseptic remedies were were required was was less i am i have been applying it for last 3 years and i see that with, uh, we could complete the case with two or three remedies in a series and that was a, a very good um, um uh, result for me as a physician because i was i was uh, uh, i was often shifting remedies based on the characteristics available and those were not always carrying all the pathologies on on the base so i had to shift from this disease to that disease so that was becoming a cumbersome process for me um so the dim, the demerit with this is like you know uh, if you are not able to elicit prominent gingival and non interpreted mind symptom it becomes it, it is a demerit you need to be very sure of the gingival that with that it is very prominent in the patient and if it is prominent i have found that results are falling in place the following is my uh, uh, i am i don't i'm not a person who just accept things for granted and the person who taught me is dr k srinivasan from salem so uh, he uh, applying the methodology i found there were results but then i wanted to give him a challenging case and see if it really works and if it uh, homeopathy is can be kept so simple so i gave i gave him a case of vitiligo uh he worked out the case and the case uh, had like you know uh, very few symptoms like the, 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 there were no symptoms at all like no there was no change in state of health the boy was presenting only with the uh, with ligo per se and uh, we worked out on bbc agendas we as we could not get any characteristic symptoms or a complete symptoms so we worked out on the generals available there he had the sweet desire he had the very prominent sweet desire and his sweat was odorous we took the rubric sweat odorous because it is so odorous that his grandmother was lying beside him he used to say that and when he comes and plays he she nauseates and goes out so that is how he sweats easily also that is also there in the remedy which fall which which comes as his prescription and there was sleep during grinding teeth sleep activities are the activities of the subconscious mind so these are given higher weightage by the by the by my teacher so on working out just based on these three rubrics alone desire sweet sweat order sleep during grinding teeth we came with sepia and we started sepia with 01 um ten sections same one cup method with two one spoon and then the the pigmentation started improving we then increased the potency to 02 and then 03 he is in the process he is there there with us for one hour, one year and three months um if i have if i have to remind you that chronic diseases uh, the shortest possible duration of cure has as per hanuman is 2 to 3 years so i suppose he is in the process of cure and uh, once as it becomes static the, the pigmentation stopped we have we start we we had the guidelines from again same dr virabhadra sir he says that to work it out on a uh, repertory of circuits nosos and imponderabilia doc, by dr berkley square and this this repertory is a specialized repertory which runs in synchrony with the bogar bonigo sent repertory all the rubrics which are available are synchrony synchronologically available as nosos in this repertory you get nosos circuits and imponderables with the same rubrics they so we worked out that and uh, we we i uh, we could not uh, uh, get sweat orders so we worked out on desire sweet and in teeth you will get it in the not in the chapter of sleep you'll get it in the chapter of teeth in that teeth uh, during sleep grinding and tuberculinum was only the remedy which you are covering and here uh, to mark my point that only remedy which comes out with these three generals is sepia there and here the only remedy which came out with is tuberculinum and this was really helping this boy it is still helping we are in, we are like you know proceeding with it and um, this is one case which really uh, gave me uh, um, shook me like you no know, okay something is there in this methodology is that keeping it simple just work taking out the generals prominent generals and working out on pathologies is something uh, which was really interesting me so i started applying in n number of cases uh, especially in my opds uh, in my opds Uh, i came across lot of patients and they have they come with so many pathologies they come with diabetes they they, they come with grd they come with kidney stones all together in one patient how are we to treat such patients how are we to approach such patients and with limited time available so uh, what i started doing is i, I started applying this generals into them and uh, 
I it was astounding that you know when I could spend 15 20 minutes of time for a patient and I could find out the uh, prominent generals and worked out on it the cases were progressing really well and uh, this is uh, my my uh, my teacher Dr Sunirma Sarkar sir from whom I learned a lot of methodologies um, which Dr Gaurav was sharing the very uh, echoing my thoughts with the, and the person who is standing beside him is Dr K Srinivasan of Salem who has taught me this methodology from Dr Veerabhadra Rao sir uh, he is Dr Veerabhadra Rao he is an ML, uh, MSc uh, he is MSENT he is an ENT specialist but he is uh, very keen about practicing Hanumanian homeopathy he is he is no more now and but he um, he is a hardcore homeopath i'll say hanumanian homeopath and he is a person who has come up with this nectar of working out on generals on um, complex pathologies and i would just like to share one case alone um, because um, i had no time to um, make really any of the presentations this is a case of a huge uterine fibroid in a 47 year female and she had other pathologies as well she had a huge fibroid it was the size of 10 to 10 you'll see in the next slide she had diabetes mellitus she had grd vertigo chronic headache chronic headache was there for 40 years and she was saying that it is right there from my childhood i could remember that i am running with a headache for long and i'm there on um, painkillers but this lady uh, was in well, she came from the hospital with an urgent advice for undergoing an hysterectomy because she was having a menorrhagia for 90 days and her her hb level fell down to 5.8 and she was trans driven she was transfused bed she was given hemostatics her bleeding was not stopping she was advised an emergency hysterectomy someone had told her about me she turned up to me and the way she described was really horrifying she used to see that the, the clots were the size of a human liver like now uh, there's a say, in tamil we call it moram uh, she used to uh, literally lift the clots with a um, plate and throw it out she could never keep a pad she had to keep a lungi or a big 10 meters cloth sort of to really block the bleeding and she was running down up to 4 hb and then lifted up to 5.8 twice she has undergone in transfusion and uh, uh, she had many complaints uh, due to positive time i think i'll just rush through and she had severe colicky pain in abdomen while passing the clots there was general meli of course with the hb so low she had she will have an meli this that was common for her disease can not stand she has to lie down pain in the soles i'll just rush on with all the symptoms i'm not going my prescription is not going to be based on this symptoms at all uh, because uh, the symptoms were too many in her i worked out her generals there was heat in general aggravation some aggravation the appetite was increased recently there was hunger more in the afternoon there was desire for condiments which was triple plus desire for fish aversion for sweet intolerance legumes were there thirst was less bowel regular and urine in any of course there was nothing um, no trouble something about our urination or maturation sweat was profuse all over especially the front of the neck she was uh, really exhausted by the sweat patterns And the sleep was sound her sleep portion was on left and she had snoring during sleep sleep activity was only snoring during sleep the the generals which I had chosen for the prominent generals which i found in her after complete case taking is that she had a desire for condiment that was one general which i took and there was a sleep portion signs the sweat in the front part of the neck i'd say this is what is called external neck it is indicated as external neck in bogabonic gosen repertory if you go to the partial sweat uh, sweat partial uh, you will see that sweat external throat is written there so sweat external throat and we have i had taken one more general of aversion sweet which was prominent in her this was exclusively my own choice because i found all the things prominent in her on investigation at that time on that particular day her hb was 5.8 and blood glucose level was 324 uh, i worked out the case the remedy which came out was sulfur i started sulfur 01 in um, 01 the 10 sections usually i i go with the same method as is followed in uh, calcutta i we started sulfur 01 on 127 um the follow post on 297 she was doing better with the headache through all the dyspnea was reducing the hb was improving 
the menses stopped, the bleeding menorrhages stopped, and her next menstrual cycle also appeared on 26-8. This menstrual cycle just lasted for seven days, and the moderate flow, she was so happy. And uh, the bilirubin level was 13.3 without any hematinics or an, and uh, random blood sugar was 193 without any anti-diabetics. Only with the sulfur 01, which is based on the generals I gave her. And uh, on 39, that's after one month, um, she was better, but there was mild bleeding, uh, like, you know, for the next cycles, the pain and abdomen was mild. So she was in the upswing, like, you know, she was improving. So I, I gave her to continue the sulfur. I gave her sulfur 03. Um, next one month, uh, maybe 10 days after, the, she started menstruating again and there was flow only for three days. And um, the flow was scanty. There was no pain abdomen. I gave her sulfur 04. And next is 311, a month after, I suppose, yes. A month after, scanty flow, no pain abdomen, no disturbances. A last cycle flow only for 18 days, which was very less compared to the 90-day cycle. But still, it was worrying for me because from the 6 days, it reduced down to 6 days. For 18 days of flow, I was a little worrying for me. It was a little worrying for me. and uh, It was, okay, moderately. And um, HP percentage was 13. Uh, there was little pain in the heel. She had a plantar fasciitis as well, and that was reducing. All of the symptoms were reduced except that the pain in the heels, which was which she was complaining. And not only that symptom, which she has at that present moment. Not all the symptoms all of her put up here. So at that day, she had only the pain in the heels, and she was aggravated in the morning on waking up. Um, then on 1612, that is right after one month, 15 days, 16 days, better menses. Appeared and it was normal, no clots, no dysmenorrhea. Her HB level without hematomic, hematonics again and the RBS, like in the random blood sugar, was being maintained in the flow. And by 6 1, she had cycles and the flow was profuse. Now it is a concern, like now I'll have to change the remedy. Um, for this, I take the guidelines of uh, Dr. Virabhadra again because I did uh, one month after, she was doing better. Uh, but the flow was a little profuse, it was giddiness present. I thought the nosod was not helping her, so I reworked out her case. Uh, I waited for, but the menorrhage was not coming down. So I reworked out her, reworked her case, and there was vertigo, all the symptoms were reappearing. Um, <clears throat> and there were certain change in um, characteristics which is not put up here. I worked out based on BBCR, I gave a natural 200 bundles. So this is just there. She's still under follow-up. I, I want you all to see how is the slide, like, you know, the uterine fibros of 10.5 into 7.5 centimeter and she was fibroid. It was multiple fibroids actually. Her HB was 5.8 and she was, she has, uh, she had um, hepatitis pilina magali also. And there were multiple fibroids. The scan which was done in Grandi Medical College in government uh, shows that they, she has multiple fibroids other than the huge fibroid seen. Uh, her blood sugar level was 324 uh, from the government hospital. Just, just for proof. After our treatment was started, I did a peripheral smear with the improved hemoglobin percentage, which I showed you there with my in the hospital setup. There was the blood smear also showed a normocytic, normocomic blood picture like and the Fibro reduced from 9 to 7.3. She's still under my treatment. So I use Boger Bonning Osen repertory a lot in my practice as well. In fact, I've written books on it. So it's it's a fantastic repertory. I'm just... Uh, but what I've also seen is that very often, very, very common and polycrest remedy comes through Boger Bonning Osen's approach. And typically, it's, it's a very good repertory for acute condition also like acute fever, dengue, malaria. For example, the current viral BBCR would be amazing as a repertory. Also, especially when modalities are very, very prominent, when, when broad generalized modalities and concomitants, if they are very, very prominent, they are very good. But I would like just like to add one more important thing here for the participants. You can't just straight away open Bogart Morning or and use it. You have to really understand the structure of the repertory. You should know where, what rubric lies, how to use it, how to repertorize with Bogart Bonning House and repertory is also a different art. It is different to Kent repertory. It is different to uh, complete repertory. It is different to Fartak repertory. I am saying this because I use these repertories very, very prominently. And finally, I would like to uh, just add, 
because uh, somewhere down the line Dhan, uh, dr dhanu lakshmi and myself we are uh, branches of the same tree somewhere so <laughs> so what i wanted to just add is that i believe and i i i believe that she will also agree that different cases require different approaches and there are certain type of cases which respond very very well to bogor bonding ocean and there are certain cases especially where the mind state is very prominent bogor bonding ocean repertory may not be the best so this is what i wanted to add can i can i just uh, uh, clarify a little bit uh, i I'll, i'd like to add on like of course i i totally agree with dr gaurang there are different approaches uh, to learn bogor bonding ocean repertory you really need to know the plan and construction of the repertory each repertory is important the plan and construction of bogor bonding ocean repertory you need to learn in depth i have learned it for two years before uh, playing after i'm playing i'm, I'm here after um, uh, close to two years i'm here for the presentation and this presentation is purely based on my clinics and i am a clinician i don't talk on theories i'm sorry and so uh, of course i agree with you dr gaurang i have learned lot of methodologies in nih and dr sarkar sir is a treasure trove of uh, methodologies Uh, we cannot it's endless you have listed lot of it my focus was on uh, the generals which was really interesting a prescription based simply on generals could keep homeopathy so simple it was so ha- it was so um, uh, ha- giving me so so much happiness that people who are who think that homeopathy is complex they can really think that okay we can practice simple also we can learn little we can focus on little a small portion and practice 